So in this video, we'll talk about voltage-gated potassium channels. As the name suggests, the conductivity of these channels is dependent on the voltage change. And these channels would conduct potassium when there is a change in voltage. In this video, we'll learn the structure of voltage-gated potassium channel. We'll learn the gating kinetics. We'll also focus on the function and the classification of voltage-gated potassium channel. So stay tuned till the end of this video. This is a overview to the uh, potassium channel structure. We can see this is the N terminal, this is a C terminal, and inside the membrane we can see there are several transmembrane alpha helices which which contains the uh, voltage sensor domain. The fourth helix is actually the voltage sensor helix. This has a lot of positively charged residue which is responsible for this voltage sensing mechanism. In between fifth and the sixth helix, there is a P loop which harbors the selectivity filter. The selectivity filter ensures that only potassium ion can pass through this channel and not other cations like sodium. So let's try to understand and let's look at the extra crystallographic structure of a potassium voltage gated potassium channel. So this is kind of a cartoon depicting the crystallographic structure where we can see the pore forming domain, selectivity filter and the voltage sensor domain. And voltage sensor domain as I have mentioned contains several positively charged residue which is responsible for the voltage sensing mechanism. Now let's try to understand how the selectivity filter works. When potassium is present in the environment, it is solvated by interacting with several uh, water molecules. While it passes through the pores of the uh, KV channel, it should have similar kind of interaction. And that is provided by the carbonyl, uh, uh, carbonyl oxygens of these voltage sensitive uh, residues. So, sodium is a smaller cation and it cannot have this optimal interaction and that kind of tells us about the selectivity of potassium channel and that is why sodium cannot pass through but potassium can because all the interactions are optimal with the carbonyl oxygens. Now let's try to understand the different states of these ion channel. There are two alternative states, closed state and uh, open state and the ion channel can switch between these two alternative states. Notice one thing, the voltage sensor is pushed upwards while in the open state. And that kind of tells us about the voltage sensitivity of the potassium channel. So in the open state, the pore is open and uh, potassium can pass through this pore. Now let's try to understand the gating kinetics by looking at electrophysiological data. So under a whole cell, uh, whole cell patch clamp configuration, we can clamp the voltage into specific magnitudes and record the current. Here we can hold the voltage at minus 80 millivolt and try to record the current from across these ion channels. What we found is the current is zero. At minus 40, the current is still zero. At zero millivolts, there is some amount of current and, the, and it increase when we make the voltage more positive. And this is how we can get the IV characteristics of voltage gated potassium channel. This tells us the current can be recorded from this ion channel in a relatively positive membrane voltage. So that kind of tells us how this particular ion channel is very selective to a range of voltages. But that is the mechanistic aspect. But how this is reflecting in terms of physiology? In order to understand that, let's try to look at the action potential again. But before that, let us try to understand what really happens in these voltage ranges. At minus 80 millivolt, the inside of the membrane is highly negative. So there is a attraction between the positive charge in the voltage sensor and the inside of the membrane. That is why the pore is remained in a closed state. But in a positive membrane voltage such as 40 millivol millivolts, the inside of the membrane would be positive and there would be a net repulsion between the uh, voltage sensitive helix and the inner side of the membrane that would push the helix outwards and that would lead to a open configuration of the potassium channel. Now we completely understand how voltage sensitivity is allowing channel opening or closing. 
Now let's try to understand the action potential. So this is how the molecular events in action potential look like. We are looking at a small portion of the neuronal membrane. Here there is sodium channel, voltage sensitive sodium channel. In the onset of depolarization, voltage sensitive sodium channel opens and sodium ion rushes in. That allows the membrane potential to become positive and a lot of membrane potential become positive and a lot of sodium ions get in. Now, when the membrane potential is becoming positive, let's say at plus 40 millivolt, this, this voltage sensitive potassium channel starts to open. Now, voltage sensitive potassium channel allows potassium ion to move out of the cell, thereby restoring the membrane potential to a negative value again. Now, one thing you should note that this potassium ion channel has a slow kinetics. So, just after the onset of a voltage change, they take some time in order of millisecond to conduct the ions and thereby there is a lag in these ion channel conductance. Probably that is why there is a lag in action potential as well. The width of action potential is roughly about a millisecond, right? Okay. so. This voltage sensitive potassium channel can modulate interspike interval. It can modulate the waveform of action potential. It can modulate input resistance and it can overall modulate the excitatory inhibitory balance in a neuronal circuit. So, in terms of physiology, modulation of voltage gated potassium channel means a lot. Now, several diseases are associated with mutations in these KV channels, such as epilepsy. So, generally, we have normal uh, neuronal activity in the brain but in epilepsy what happens there is a hyper excitability which results in the seizure like uh, sy symptoms now there are several mutant mutations which are reported in these kv channels namely kv 3.3 where which are associated with epilepsy we can understand why this happens because when we have a uh, when we have uh, less amount of potassium channel or the non functional potassium channel the repolarization does not take place or takes place at a slower pace that leads to this hyper excitability that leads us to the therapeutic importance of voltage gated potassium channel modulation so let's say this is the steady state firing rate inside our brain when there is a change in this firing rate, there could be diseases. For example, hyperexcitability occurs in epilepsy or bipolar disorders where there is a uh, increase in the spike frequencies. Also, the decrease in spike frequency occurs in depression or in multiple sclerosis. So, in these circumstances, if we use proper agonist or antagonist of KV channel, it might restore the firing frequency to a steady state level and it might regain the function. That is why these KV channels are really important modulators and therapeutic targets. Now, the potassium current which is recorded from this KV channel has two components within it. One is a fast activating and fast inactivating current. Another is a delayed rectifier current. Actually, there are different type of potassium channels which has these characteristic waveforms such as shaker and shall which are mammalian KV1 and KV2 family having have these particular kinetics of fast activating and fast inactivating. That means their kinetics is relatively fast. They open quickly and they close quickly as well. In contrast, if we talk about Shab or Shaw, these names are in Drosophila and which, which corresponds to KV3 or KV4 family, all these channels has a relatively uh, slower kinetics. That means they take more time to close. Now we can clearly understand how these different ion channels can differentially modulate the action potential waveform or spike frequency. Moreover, one important thing that we should note, the distribution of these KV channels are heterogeneous in different neurons. Especially KV 1.1 is found throughout the axon, whereas KV 2.1 are found in the proximal dendrite, KV 4.2 is found in the distal dendrite and KV 3.2 is found all over the dendrites. So, these differential distribution of voltage gated potassium channel might imply in terms of their uh, in terms of the overall neuronal functionality or signal integration.
Now let me tell you a cool story about the discovery of a voltage gated potassium channel. Scientists were looking at fly mutants and they have EMS treated multiple mutant lines and their assay was simple. They thought since these potassium channels are responsible for modulation of action potential, if there is a mutation in the potassium channel, it would lead to a hyper excitability. Normally, a fly is anesthetized under ether exposure and it doesn't move its legs or any body parts. But there are category of mutants which came out of these screen which shows hyper excitability and that is why they shake their legs even under ether anesthesia when they are not supposed to shake their legs. And these mutants are known as shaker mutants. The name says it all, shaker, leg shaking, right? And that is the discovery of KV1 family of voltage gated potassium channel. Very simple experiment, but really elegant. Now we understand in retrospect that how shaker mutation might have affected the action potential waveform. So it might have prolonged these repolarization phase and that leads to the hyperexcitability. Now apart from voltage gated potassium channels there are many other type of potassium channels. Let me tell you that there are 32 genes in mammals which encode for voltage gated potassium channels. Other than voltage gated potassium channels there would be two transmembrane domain containing inward rectifier channels, four transmembrane domain containing two pore domain channels, there are slow, uh, slow kinetics potassium channel, slowpokes or SK type of potassium channels. In different videos, we'll talk about the characteristics of each of these ion channels, but let us summarize what we have learned so far. We learned the structure of the voltage gated potassium channel, opening and closing kinetics, distribution of this ion channel and the functional aspect of KV channels. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to support me on Patreon. If you're an Indian viewer, you can support me via Bhim UPI. Your small contribution means a lot for me and my channel. My detailed lectures are present in Unacademy. You can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. And as usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you have a suggestion, let me know in the comment.